Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Meredith and today we are going to do a quick hair taping tutorial because it is one of the easiest ways to get your hair all bound up and out of your way if you're going to be doing a 15th or 16th century Italian um, look. It is also used in other parts of Europe throughout the 15th and 16th century. And there's a couple ways to do it. So each one of those versions, I'm going to get their own little video to. That way, if you don't like this one, I'll have another place to send you for a different option on how to do that. First thing we're going to need is a ribbon. This is a, I want to say half inch wide silk ribbon that I picked up at Renaissance Fabrics. Um, not sponsored or affiliated, but I'll put their info down below if you want to order some from them. There's a bunch of different historical sewing trimming places that you can usually find silk ribbon from. So go look around, have some fun. Um, other things we're going to need would include one of these awesome double-sided combs just to kind of get your part going and get any of the remaining tangles out of your hair. I'm going to use my favorite bone haired bodkin, which is basically a giant needle that we're going to use to lace everything. And I've also got some of these tiny little hair tie things. That way I can use them to simulate sewing the ends of my hair together. Um, just makes it a little easier for this video. You could also bind off the ends of your hair with a needle and thread. So let's get moving. Um, first thing we need to do is put a center part in our hair. They didn't do side parts in the 15th, 16th century. That is a very modern look that you're rocking if you've got that side part. So we're going to adjust and get our center part moving. Um, I always have mine just is slightly off center, always. There we go. All right. So what I usually do is I'm going to do two braids that start just at the sort of base of my ear and then we are going to cross them over and wrap this ribbon around. Something to keep in mind with this is you do need to know how to do a three strand braid for your hair. Um, I will try and link something down in the description in case you're not familiar with what I'm talking about. That way you can get a more in-depth look at what those braids are. All right, we've got our little hair tie. I'm gonna tie this off for right now. Braid one, ah, ah, ah. Um, my hair is fairly long. I probably could have started it lower on my head, but if your hair is shorter, you can start it actually at the top of your ear and it'll give you more ability to wrap that braid around and get the sort of crown, braid crown look that you're going for. Ta-da. Let's get the other side done. One of my pitfalls is always trying to get them even. So let's give this a go. Um, so another thing to think about is usually when you're looking at portraiture from this time period, their hair is not plastered to their head, so you don't need to pull your hair tight when you're starting these braids. 
leave it a little floofy so you have a little bit of room to fluff and as you're kind of pushing this braid up it's going to cause a poof that will nicely frame your face which will probably make more sense after I braid this section getting ahead of myself This one has way more play than this one. So I'm going to fluff this side a bit before we start moving. Again, the fluffier the top portion is right now, the more hair you'll have to kind of frame your face as you start getting the hair situated into that um, either crown or half crown of braids. So as you're starting to get these circles forming, you want them to sit farther back on your head. So if I were to give you a verbal description while I kind of fuss with this. You want it to basically be sitting straight off the back of your head rather than leaning forward to try and support the braids. The ribbon is going to be doing all of the support work for you. You don't need to gravity to work as much once it's sewn in place. So, you want it to look roughly like that. I'm leaning my head forward right now to try and use gravity a bit to keep that braid in place. I'm going to leave a little tail and I'm going to stitch just part of this in place. In the earlier portions of the 16th and in the 15th century, they're just wrapping this ribbon around your braids. And basically kind of like whip stitching your hair. And there are examples of this sort of whip stitch style of hair dressing going earlier into the Middle Ages, especially in Italy. All right, so that kind of gets it started. I've got a little tail here that I will use to tie some stuff off in just a minute. But first, I want to get the second crown of braids put in place so I can tuck in that end. Hopefully. You're getting the idea. I'm going to secure this. Okay. Got that. Stick this back around.
right. Now with your ends, if there's they're long enough, there's a couple different options. So option one, I have moved my two ends to the center back, I'm kind of tugging on them, making sure that they feel secure. I'm going to round my hair twice and change and ended up at the nape of my neck. I can just tie this in a cute little bow. And that's what I'm going to opt to do because my ribbon isn't quite long enough to tie back around my head again. So there you go. It's a profile shot. You can see how far back it's sitting. Um, if you're finding it's not feeling super secure, you might want to do more small stitches and that will keep it secured onto your hair and onto your scalp instead of sliding back. In some pieces of portraiture, you do see it where the ring of braids has started to kind of fall off of this and squish down. In my experience, I get that look when I do large stitches like this rather than a lot of smaller, more secure stitches, which keep it farther up. So I guess the answer is they're both historically accurate to the best of my knowledge. It's just a matter of what kind of look are you trying to get. This is super simple. I love wearing this with actually my 16th century bill outfit, which I'll put a link in the description of. It's one of the other hair styles I will wear with it. A lot of my 16th century Florentine looks will have something like this, maybe a retta over it. So psst, you guys are secretly getting a bunch of hairstyle videos because I want to figure out how exactly I want to wear my hair. And what better way to figure that out than doing some screen tests, right? But I hope you're all having a fantastic day and you enjoyed this basic braided hair taping tutorial. We'll do a couple other variations on this over the next couple of days. And I hope you're having a wonderful week. Subscribe if you'd like more historical hair content and I will see you soon. Bye.